Sure. Right? And maybe when you're thinking about, you know, what you might save for retirement, a million dollars might be a ton of money. And then when you're starting to think about what you need for to impact your community, you might think a hundred million dollars is a lot of money. And you might think to make an impact at the state level, a billion and a half dollars is a lot of money. I don't know if folks saw this, but one of the things I put on the tables was this thing that says, because of the tax changes in 2005, Ohio is losing three and a half billion dollars. Not just like one time total three and a half over the course of 10 years, three and a half billion dollars every single year. So let's just say what you were talking about would cost a billion and a half dollars. We could do that. And what we did it for, y'all didn't even feel it. Like when I asked you, did you feel the income tax? And you were like, uh, most people, are like, I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> well, for what I didn't, like you didn't know what I was talking about. You could have had free pre-K for every kid in the state. You could have had free, co you know, so this is the kind of thing you could feel it. I tell people three and a half billion dollars a year, you ought to feel it. Yes. I mean, you ought to see the difference. Yeah. And most people don't even know. So anyway, just one of those like things to kind of wrap your head around is that three, you know, a billion dollars might seem like a lot of money, but at the state level, honestly, a billion dollars moves and most people don't even know. Why do we lose it? Because of these major changes we made. So we said we're going to cut the income tax. We made we went away from a corporate profits tax. We're one of only six states that no okay. longer has one. Okay. Uh, we, we made some changes that made it so that when you made all the movements, it was bringing in a lot less money. Okay. And so all that less money is money we can't spend or invest in things like what we're talking about here. Okay. And Katie yeah. has some numbers for you. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Um, does anybody want to go next or you want to keep going around or who, who's, who wants to throw their idea out next? Katie. Kate? <laughs> All right. Yeah, she had and some numbers. Very empowering table. Um, well, I, we are going to cheat because we said we want 3.5 billion. Okay. Uh, we circled Great. it. So that's how much we want because we have a couple things we want to do with it. Mm -hmm. One billion alone would probably end homelessness across the state of Ohio if you just pay people's rent. I mean, a thousand dollars a month apartment for uh, twelve months is twelve thousand dollars. Just pay that rent for people, you'd have eighty-three thousand people housed. I don't know the exact number, but it, it would be a pretty good chunk of people. Off That's the, the kind of math my colleague and I love to do. Uh -huh. That is fun math, yes. right? There. right. Mm -hmm. And That's probably good. not that inaccurate. <laughs> not too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. The other billion a year we would spend making new affordable housing um, for people who are lower, lower income and about $150,000 a unit to produce. So we would make 6,700 affordable homes across the state of Ohio for, um, for the state. Mm -hmm. And then we spend the other $1.5 billion because housing is a foundation that we must have in order to be able to operate and have a job, have a place for our kids to stay. So we wanted to have foundation. But um, a lot was talked about job training, education, but specifically around care industry. So child care and health care um, and taking care of folks, taking care of our communities being valued. So people would get on the job training or job training either in high school vocational <laughs> education or post and into jobs that create care jobs. And then at the end of that, um, they would get a grant for an entrepreneurial activity, whether they want to be a home care provider or, or start a business of their own that employs other people. So that was kind of like a full spectrum from 16 to 65. Mm -hmm. Was she good at That's a really cool idea. She I love it. Yeah. I mean, honest to God, there are a bunch of people who work in the governor's office who just go around and troll for ideas like this. And they really don't come up with that much good stuff in the scheme of things. So that's actually a pretty cool concept, and especially for a legislature that really likes talking about benefiting small businesses, that wants to grow entrepreneurship. That's an interesting little twist on like the workforce development than you know going into a, a grant for a, a, a business startup. That's a that's a, I mean, it legitimately an idea worth uh, worth thinking about and seeing if there's a model around the country. So we can um, add that to the list. Any other folks' comments on that or questions about the, the, the table here that had some good ideas? Yeah. Okay, who's next? You said what you said. Um, I, we've been hearing a lot of education, and Amy is going to talk about the education. Um, I'm going to talk about the community aspect. I've been hearing so much about education. We need preschools and so on and so forth, and that's great. But that leaves a big hole. Folks who are 30, 
35 or right now 40 don't have training. Mm -hmm. They're not going to see the benefits of any of this stuff that we're talking about. So what I think that we need to do for those minorities and women, we need to build some really good um, education centers, and I am not talking about super jobs or anything. <laughs> we need some training centers that are going to not try to get you out of my office so I can get your five that my five thousand yes, dollar grant yes, money for you and yes. you're making eight dollars an hour. Yes. That's a huge issue, and I know this because I actually went to super jobs, and that's what they do. Mm -hmm. um, we need for this to be quiet. Wow. We um, need some educational training centers that we need to build them in these lacking neighborhoods. It's not easy for mm -hmm. folks to get across town, downtown, or any place else for that matter. We need to find these people, go, you know, make it easy, accessible um, for them and get into careers. I have no idea what this money costs. This is why we're going to hire you to figure all that stuff out. The You're in luck. I'm already hired. I know, I know. <laughs> Um, the other thing with that community stuff is I went through uh, Gavin's uh, New Leaders program and I had a mentor. He was not a woman, but he was a gay black man and he meant a lot to me. And I think that we need women leadership um, organizations around here. Take some of these folks like Katie and Kristen and just some of the women who are doing great work um, in the community and Yolanda and folks of color to mentor some of these folks and help them, you know, figure out what they want to do in life. I think that's important. So that's, that's me on the community aspect. That's a tough act to follow. That's so good. with that, um, I wanted to use the money to really try to help young people with their Thank you. 